Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this week's videos. Um, in this week's videos, I'm going to do a very quick Aspen Plus simulation on the production of ethyl acetate from ethanol and acetic acid. Actually, I have talked about this uh, process in my earlier videos, which I have published like eight months ago, if I'm not mistaken. But so, so instead of focusing on the process itself, like discussing uh, what are uh, ethyl acetate and, and whatnot, uh, instead of doing that, I am, uh, what I'm proposing uh, in these videos is to focus on the block that I will be using to model the process, which is the CSTR block, as well as uh, focus on the reaction itself, which is the equilibrium reaction. So I guess in the, the, in the, uh, when we do our simulation, we will see what kind of input that we will, that we need to add, okay, when we use the CSTR and what kind of input also that we need to, to, to include when we set up our reaction, uh, equilibrium reaction. So without further ado, let's get to it. So as you can see here, this is our process. Uh, this process is pretty simple. Uh, basically, we have one mole of ethanol react with one mole of acetic acid. Uh, to form one mole of one mole of uh, ethyl acetate and one mole of water, and the entire reaction is a liquid phase reaction. And our objective uh, for today's videos is we're gonna model the reaction process using a CSTR block, and we're gonna do a simple uh, sensitivity analysis where we're gonna observe how the reaction conversion changes with respect to uh, reactor volume. And this figure shows our, our process flow diagram uh, where we have two streams coming in, uh, stream A and stream B. Both of the streams have similar temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and pressure around 110, 110 kilopascal. Uh, in stream number, in stream A, we have 50 kilomole per hour of uh, acetic acid. And stream B, we have 50 kilomole per hour of uh, ethanol. And then these two streams gonna mix in a mixer to form uh, a mixture of uh, of a solution, uh, which I denote as F, which I name it as a feed, okay. And then I have a reactor block here operating at fifty degrees Celsius, pressure around one zero one kilopascal, and the volume of the reactor is around three uh, cubic meter. And then uh, we have a product stream. And finally, we have important information that we need to include in our simulation. Uh, the first one here, we have rate constant, a K, which is 1.206 times 10 to the power of 6 per second. And then we have activation energy of reaction around 54,240 kilojoule per mole. And then because this is a, an equilibrium-based reaction, we have equilibrium constant KEQ uh, based on molarity, which is equal to 4.5. And we and we will be using NRTL HOC uh, for our property uh, for our thermodynamic property methods. And finally, we have our rate of reaction. Uh, this is a net uh, rate of reaction where, where we have a forward reaction and we have a backward reaction. And if you see this net uh, reaction rate, uh, it is clear that forward reaction follows the uh, the uh, power law, power law uh, type of reaction, and backward reaction also follow the power law types of reaction. And now that we have clearly defined our problem, uh, let's do our simulation. Okay, I have opened my Aspen Plus uh, software and first what I'm going to do as usual, I'm going to input uh, my component. Uh, the first one is ethanol. Okay, there's going to be a lot of it. Uh, I need to find one by one. I have ethanol and I, ha I will add the second compound. And then repeat the same thing, uh, find acetic acid. Uh, add selected compound, uh, I'm gonna add. Next one is ethyl acetic. Add selected compound, add. And then I'm gonna close. And lastly, I'm just gonna define water. 
I'm gonna rename this as uh, uh, no. Uh, this one I'm gonna rename as uh, acetic acid, a acid. And then this one I'm gonna rename this as uh, ETH uh, acetic. Okay, next, uh, just hit next. Okay, it will direct you to the next uh, input that you, you need to add. And as usual, uh, based on our uh, based on the pres presentation just now, we need to select NRTLHOC. Okay, and then hit next. I'm not going to do anything uh, here. Uh, I have all the parameters required for the calculation. Hit next. I'm not going to do anything here. Just hit next. Uh, hit OK. And then I'm going to go to the simulation environment. Okay, I'm going to add mixer. Okay, and then I'm going to add a reactor, CSTR. And then I'm going to add my material stream, which is here as one. I'm going to rename it later. Okay, I will rename my stream. Uh, here is A. And then uh, B, uh, F, and uh, C. Uh, this one I will rename as Mixer. And then here I will rename as uh, CSTR. Um, I don't want to waste a lot of time making this nice and, you know, uh, align or, 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 or well arranged, but um, maybe I'll do some alignment here and there. And, and then, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I'm going to hit next, or I'm just going to click, uh, hit double click uh, stream A, where I have uh, temperature of the uh, stream A is 20 degrees Celsius, pressure is 110 uh, kilopascal. And then molar fluid is uh, this uh, uh, ethanol or acetic acid. Uh, this is acetic acid, uh, 50 kilomol. And then I'm going to close this. And then I'm going to input screen uh, B. Uh, same temperature, uh, same pressure, uh, which is in kilopascal. Uh, molar fluid of ethanol is 50, and then I can close. And then, uh, okay, next. Uh, I need to move this uh, this uh, video first so that I can hit next. Okay, hit next. Okay, here I am at the uh, this. Uh, maybe I should put it here. It's a lot, it's a lot better here. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, setup uh, specification for CSTR. Uh, I will have uh, in here we have a reactor operating at 101 kilopascal. Uh, pressure uh, 50 degrees Celsius. And then, uh, oh. Valid phases because our reaction uh, happened, uh, it is a liquid phase reaction. I'm gonna use a uh, liquid only as a valid phases, and then I'm gonna specify reactor volume. Uh, and our reactor volume is three cubic meter, so this one and then three cubic meters. And we have completed this specification uh, form, and then we need to uh, complete the reaction uh, form. Uh, you, uh, you can hit new here and then uh, it will generate a, a, a folder uh, named uh, reaction R1 which you need to, 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 to add the activation energy as well as the reaction constant and all of that stuff and then I'm going to hit OK. Um, here you have, uh, you can choose power law if you want uh, but I'm just going to use uh, the general one. Just to mix things up and I'm going to hit OK. 
So R1, which we haven't uh, specified yet, has already been uh, uh, added into the reaction set that will be used uh, uh, when they, when we model our safety. Uh, and then if you go down or if you hit next, uh, it doesn't really matter, it will go to the reaction folder. Uh, let's say I hit next. And see here, it goes to the same folder, which is R1 input. I'm going to hit new, click new. And then reaction, uh, you have option to change equilibrium, LHHW, okay, custom, a lot of things, but uh, I know that my reaction is a power law, forward and backward reaction, and I know it is a reversible reaction. So I'm, I'm gonna check the reaction is reversible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna name it maybe R1 for uh, name of this, uh, uh, this uh, reaction. Component as usual, I have ethanol, uh, acetic acid as my reactant, uh, coefficients one and then one. Uh, I will, uh, and it will form ethyl acetate and water. Uh, also coefficient of one and one. And then, uh, and you are pretty much done, uh, uh, input everything uh, for this particular uh, form. And I can hit next. And then you need to input your kinetic uh, uh, kinetic uh, parameters. Uh, here we have K value and uh, this three exponential factors, uh, activation energy. The not here is your T reference, uh, which I will explain later. Here I have uh, uh, the, the rate constant is, is 1.206 to the power of 6. It should be, uh, it should, the unit should be uh, uh, to the power of uh, second, no, sec uh, uh, second to the power of negative one. Activation energy, I know is uh, 54 to 40 kilojoule per kilomole. And I don't know what's my T there, uh, but in this, this one is your kinetic factor, by the way. And then uh, in the equilibrium, uh, because this is, a, this is an equilibrium uh, reaction, uh, you need to, to input something here. Uh, I'm going to copy uh, KEQ from the built-in expression. And here, uh, I'm going to use a molarity because that's, uh, it is specified in the, in the, uh, in the problem. And then, uh, and then we know that uh, equilibrium reaction equilibrium constant is 4.5. So we need to find out at what A value will give us KEQ is equal to uh, one uh, 4.5, which I will explain uh, later. But I know the numbers is uh, 1.5. Okay, I'm pretty much done setting up the reaction, uh, the, 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 the reaction and CFT are block. Okay, before I, I, I run my reaction, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the, the, the input specification uh, for the CSTR as well as the the, uh, the parameter that you need to add for the uh, for the equilibrium uh, constant as well as the activation energy kinetic uh, uh, kinetic driving force as well as uh, I think the other one is a chemical potential driving force I, I forgot maybe later I will show. So as you can see here, this is our reaction where we have uh, acetic acid react with uh, uh, ethanol forming ethyl acetate and water. And uh, all of it has a coefficient of one, okay, for each of these uh, chemical species. And then we know that the, the, uh, the, the kinetic factors, okay, uh, we need to input the the uh, pre-exponential factors, which is 1.206 times 10 to the power of 6, and activation energy is around 54,240 uh, kilojoule per uh, kilo And uh, this the, uh, the, the, the the entire equation that describe this uh, this uh, kinetic kinetic factors and driving force. Uh, but in this case, uh, we have. Uh, uh, in this case, they are for power law uh, reaction. Where here, okay, I have uh, K, which is your pre-exponential factors, T, temperature, okay, depends on your reaction, and then T ref, which is your, your reference temperature. If you don't have, if you don't specify, this become zero, no, this become one, sorry, because temperature, a number divided by zero to the power of a number will give you one, 
exponent okay uh, activation energy divided by uh, uh, universal gas constant uh, multiplied by 1 over t minus 1 over t left so, so if you don't specify 1 over t left this uh, term uh, is eliminated so what you have is just uh, r is equal to k exponent negative uh, exponent uh, uh, negative uh, um, activation energy uh, over r multiplied by 1 over t and then here we have a driving force uh, for for power law here this is a not by term by the way this uh, sum of product uh, symbol where you have uh, k here is a, is, a, is a constant i don't really remember what it is uh, and c here is your is your uh, concentration it can be maybe in the in the, in the form of, 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 of a molarity it can be in the form of uh, partial pressure and so on and so on b beta here is your is your uh, what is it called is your uh, beta here is your uh, uh, reaction coefficient okay if here you have one uh, if you if you are talking about uh, a right your your um, uh, your coefficient is one so you have c uh, for for acetic acid to the power of uh, one and then it is because it is a product right so you just continue on with b c d and so on and so on but since i have set the the coefficient okay for the forward reaction as one and one so what i have is just something like this and then if you remember the the built-in expression for the equilibrium coefficient uh, calculation no, equilibrium constant calculation you have two options the first one here the first one is to use the gibbs free energy you let you let aspen to calculate for you but since I know what is my KEQ, I can sort of like back calculate the parameter in such a way that I get uh, KEQ is equal to 4.5. So what I'm going to do, uh, first, uh, this is the, 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 the equation that relates uh, equilibrium constant with some, par some parameter A and B, a constant A, B, C, and then D, and they are a function of temperatures. And then I can set, uh, because I know my K, uh, e uh, equilibrium constant is 4.5 i can just set b c d equals to zero so what i have is just uh long uh, ke uh, or natural log of ke is equal to a and then uh, and then you do calculation you will get a is equal to 1.5 that's how i get uh 1.5 uh and that's how i put that's why i put 1.5 in my built-in uh, keq expression Okay, next I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run net, uh, hit next and then run the simulation. Okay, I have a result, but I'm not gonna view the screen summary just yet because we're gonna do a, a, a simple sensitivity analysis to observe how the conversion okay changes with respect to the uh, reactor uh, volume. So what we're gonna do next is we're just gonna go to this uh, I think model analysis tool. Okay, you need to go to the model analysis tool, uh, go to sensitivity, and then hit new. You can uh, you can add your own ID, but I'm just gonna keep it as it is. Uh, hit OK. I need to define my uh, variables. My in this case, my manipulated variables. So I'm, I want to manipulate my reactor volume. So my manipulated variables should be reactor volume. So I hit new. Uh, type it is a reactor variable. So just choose a block variables. Uh, choose your block. Uh, CSTR is your block variable. Uh, you have option to look for, but since I know what I'm, uh, what variable that I want, uh, it is a volume. So just, just uh, select the like volume unit. Uh, I should, I, I want it to be in cubic meter. I'm going to vary between uh, 0 0.5 to 10 cubic meters. And increment is, they do calculation, they repeat the calculation every 0.5 cubic meter. Now we are done uh, setting up the manipulated variables. Next, we're going to define our uh, responsive variable. But before that, I'm, I need to go back to the slide and to show you uh, uh, what kind of variable that I need to set up.
uh, to, to do this sensitivity analysis. So as I said before, we will observe how the converge, how the reaction conversion changes with reactor volume. And from here, we know that our manipulated variables is reactor volume and our response to the variable is our uh, conversion. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna calculate the conversion based on this equation where I have Fi, uh, flow rate of uh, species I, for example, maybe I'm gonna use uh, ethanol. Uh, no, no, uh, maybe, maybe uh, yes, ethanol minus ethanol uh, leaving out of the reactor divided by the uh, uh, ethanol incoming ethanol. But since I know what's the incoming flow rate of ethanol, I can just simply use, um, uh, 50 minus uh, ethanol flow rate uh, leaving the reactor divided by 50. That's how I'm going to define my conversions. And then I also need to define my, define my ethanol molar flow rate uh, leaving the reactor, which is which I will define as Fj. So those are the two variables that I need to set up. Okay, coming back to our aspen, I uh, just need to define our variables. The first one here is we're going to define uh, molar flow rate of ethanol leaving the reactor, which is Fj, uh, hit OK. So uh, the, it is a stream variable, okay, choose stream variable, and uh, it is it's going to be a molar flow rate, okay. The stream will be uh, leaving the reactor, which is a P product. Component that I'm interested in is the ethanol leaving the reactor. Uh, unit is in kilometer per hour, should be okay. And then we're going to define one more, which is the uh, conversion. I'm going to put X for my conversion. Now, uh, if you go to all of this category, you will not find any conversion uh, conversion variables uh, available in Aspen. So you need to have your own sort of like uh, user-defined variable. Uh, so what you need to do is just go to type, uh, just need to choose, um, I forgot what it is, um, should be, uh, should be, it should be local parameter, which is a uh, user defined local parameters. Uh, physical type, uh, no, I'm sorry, not local parameters. Ah, I already forgot what do you uh, should be. I think it should be local parameters, to, to be honest. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, you're pretty much done. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, I need to define uh, my uh, x uh, because x uh, is, it is an equation, right? So I'm going to go to the Fortran, go to the seventh column or the first row, and then just type the equation x is equal to 50 minus. Uh, Fj divided by a uh, fifty. That's my uh, Fortran. Uh, that's my. That's how. That's uh, that is how I define my conversion. And lastly, uh, I'm gonna tabulate like you know in an Excel you have a column and row. So I'm gonna assign the first column as my uh, uh, conversion uh, to tabulate my my conversion. And then I'm pretty much done. So hit next. And then we're gonna run the simulation. Uh, and then you can go here. And then you can expand and then you can get the result. So this is the result. And then we can uh, tabulate our, uh, we can tabulate our result in the form of a graph where just click custom and then my X axis should be uh, a vector volume. Uh, my y axis should be a conversion. So hit OK. And then you're going to get this kind of this, 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 this sort of like trend where increasing vector volume will lead to increasing uh, in, in conversion. But I'm not going to discuss more here because I have uh, put, I have compiled all, the, all of the results in my. Uh, in my slide, so we're gonna go to the slide and then discuss the result uh, from uh, from there. So this is my result. Uh, okay, actually I have taken this this uh, this uh, example problem from this uh, chemical uh, process design and simulation Aspen Plus and Aspen Hysis application textbook written by uh, Juma Hadari. 
So I can compare my simulation with his, okay, where, where P1 is my, uh, 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 is the fluid leaving the reactors uh, for my simulation. Uh, P ref here is the, uh, is the result taken from the textbook. And while, while, while you can see they are, they are, they are fairly different. So I don't know, maybe I, I didn't make some mistake. Maybe yes, maybe no, but if you, if you get the same result as I am, uh, let me know in the comment section. And lastly, if you look at this uh, sensitivity, sensitivity analysis curve, we can see that, see that uh, as we increase the reactor volume, okay, we can see uh, that the conversion of the uh, conversion of the ethanol into uh, forming acetic, uh, forming uh, ethyl acetate, uh, uh, steadily increasing. But I guess, uh, yeah, I, I know that this is just a, a trend, but I guess for us as a chemical engineer, we need to find out, okay, we need to uh, determine, okay, at what volume, okay, we need to stop because, because you know, increasing volume is, will increase uh, conversion, but increasing volume meaning that uh, the, the capital costs would, would increase. And then there's gonna be a mass transfer limitation because you have a big, uh, uh, because you have a large uh, reactor where, where it's gonna be more difficult for you to maintain uh, maintain the volume if you have a jacket, jacketed reactor because, you know, ma maintain to maintain the temperature because when you have a jacketed reactor and then you have a very big reactors, the, the heat transfer to conduction, convection, and all that kind of stuff from the outer layer to the inner inner layers will be will be can 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 be uh, can be a lot slower if we compare to the one that has a very that has a smaller uh, reactor volumes. Yeah, I guess you you can eliminate eliminate the problem by using you know mixing. Well, I guess the yes, yeah, is it, it does has a has a has a has a impeller for you to mix but but still though uh, I, I think uh, in general uh, a larger reactor does not necessarily does not really have a uh, uh, the, the heat transfer in a larger large volume reactor is not as is, is less efficient I would say compared to the smaller reactors I could be wrong though but, but that's how I think so as a chemical engineer you need to find what is the best what, what is the what is the sweet spot where you have enough conversion, okay, for for you to get uh, to get a reactor to, to get a, a product, okay, while uh, while uh, uh, using a smallest uh, reactor volume possible. Okay, that would be all for me. Uh, thank you guys uh, for listening. I apologize if I uh, if I mentioned some you know weird and incorrect information. If you find out uh, there are some incorrect information in my, in my videos, uh, let me know in the comment section. Uh, and if you like the videos, give it a thumbs up uh, and do subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.